This is gonna be interesting. Like really interesting. Hello, you okay? Okay, before we start, that is Paul, and that is little Paul. Now, big Paul and little Paul are all the way from New Zealand, made out of good old driftwood. And yeah, um, Paul's been empty for a while. Hey Paul, you okay? Yeah, Paul's been empty for a while, and this will be the last jump cut, I hope. Okay, so this video is about pretty much all the bands I've worked with. Now, I will apologize in advance to any band that watches this and go, you didn't mention me. It's because I probably forgot. <laughs> it, this is, I haven't looked at the box. We're in for, uh, you're in for the same kind of treatment as I am. I've made the effort by getting a few counterparts. So this is basically 15, give or take. You can maybe get a couple of slippy EPs in here. So it's meant to be the 15. Now, Paul lives in the other room on the floor and Paul's just been emptied since they've moved in, except for the one CD, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, the idea is to fill Paul up. And to be honest with you as well, where I've been keeping all these CDs handy, um, the lights and all that are stored on it and the fucking box crushed the, the housing for the, the halogen light. So now every time I get the fucking light out and putting down the floor, I've got to go and get the fucking hoover and hoover up all the fucking polystyrene because it's a brand new carpet and just fucking polystyrene just stands out and it's a purple fucking carpet. You can check out the videos and see the purple carpet. I'm not going to go, purple carpet! Okay, so, this is a trip down memory lane. It's totally unscripted. Now, if I think it's good enough to be in there, it's going in there. If not, it's going back in the box, and the box will be neatly filed in the other room. And then the outtakes will be what's got loose over the years and still preserved. Now, I've been lucky enough and so fortunate to work with so many bands over the past 20 years. And... Massive shout out first up to Skinflint um, because I don't think there's one Skinflint here, <laughs> CD here, um, because I think Rachel's got all them. <laughs> so I think Rachel's got them. She's definitely got me Drill album, um, which is Scott's um, from the Cornia from himself, um, a spin off band. Um, so yeah, we'll get there eventually. We're talking about that. But yeah, they're definitely missing from the archive. I just know they are. So we'll get there eventually. Um, I've again been so fortunate if it's filming bands live and then you, you interact with the bands live or I've directed music videos or I've somehow produced them as well as what I do now with local artists as well um, selling them within HMV as well and doing live shows so I'm going to go tripping down there and talk about all this kinds of stuff but it's going to be totally unplanned I've got a box down here literally this box right it's full now some of these will be copies some of them aren't even fucking CDs, but I'll talk about them. Um, and if I think they're justified, they're going in there. And I'll just film some other bits and bobs. So that's why there's some bits lying around. So first up at the top, it is Mitch Laddie, Wave of Illusion. The reason why that's at the top is this is one of the newest albums I own. I also get a big thank you in there as well, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and it's been on Paul ever since we moved in. So everywhere Paul's went, Mitch's album has been in there. Now, considering I have a few of Mitch's albums, Mitch can go at the top because um, I love it a bit. And as I say, um, I used some of Mitch's foot, the, the songs from Mitch's. That, and I remember about five or six years ago, me and Mitch sat and um, we did like a live in HMV years back. And um, Mitch also did a live, the Clooney album, which I filmed. And Mitch then was saying, I want to get into doing some more score stuff and different kinds of stuff. And Mitch is a massive fan of Prince. And, I love Wave of Illusion, I love the bits and it even means more to me where Mitch goes, just use what you want and it's weird as well because the copyright, especially with YouTube, it's a fucking nightmare, it is a nightmare because like, yeah like, I got a copyright claim the other day off that album because I did a video called What's on the Wall and um, YouTube comes up, advert comes up in the video, you message Mitch and have you heard now? No. <laughs> It's just like, come on, YouTube, you can't, you can't have it one way, you know what I mean? It's just like, someone's got ads on the video, I don't monetize any of my videos, and like, again, you know, it's just one of those things, yeah, for fuck's sake. Uh, but quite a few tracks from that album have appeared on my videos, Musk was in, Welcome to IT, Adora, um, we are developing something for Moonlight down the line, um, Human was recently featured, as well as Dig a Little Deeper was featured in... Um, Jack Frost video, so it's been heavily featured. Um, I love it a bit, um, as I say. That's why it's staying at the top there. Um, another album that should be there, which, I, oh, I can't see it. It's here, actually. Um, it's got no housing. It's one I also get a thank you in. Why has it got no housing? Because, dun, 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 it's just framed up on the wall. 
Uh, Scott Michael Callaghan, I would say his name wrong. I've known the guy for like 20 years. I first met Scott um, in Trillions years back. Ended up in Legends. Uh, Laconi was a massive part of the early days. Um, this is the uh, album launch, and that's the album there with the sheet there and all signed. Stays up in the wall, could do a wipe actually. But yeah, Scott's album will not be going in there because it's on the wall, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, both Scott and Mitch have played live at HMV, and we sell, we will be selling um, Wave of Illusion going into this year, um, but we sell two of their albums, both played live. When HMV wanted to do live videos and I was approached to produce and do the shows live, it's one thing pulling out the, the shop and like realise it's a busy Saturday and you're going to have thousands of people just walking around the background. Um, Mitch was definitely the first person um, to do it. Of course, the guy can just control it, you know what I mean? Um, and especially as well with the Gateshead store, it's not huge. So years ago when Mitch, Matty and Ryan played live, and the Newcastle store is quite big, so you can, you can do it big and bold. And um, check out a video on my YouTube called Moments. Um, you see a lot of the best of my live footage. So you've got stuff like Joe Ott um, in Spain, which was one of the best things I think I've ever filmed because he just sat down next to us in a bar and it was half cut. And I love that a bit, but the Mitch live at um, um, HMV, the original round, it's in there as well. But Mitch was always good at that. Then Cav, um, again, Cav really bust out his own, doing acoustic and what hands down to Steel Time Music, who are a massive part of everything I do behind the scenes because they promote the shows really well. Stuff like Elizabeth Little, um, again, she is absolutely amazing. I don't have any of her tracks yet because she hasn't fully done an EP and stuff. I've been working on it for the last couple of years, but when I start doing the live shows, Mitch is self-contained. Mitch can turn up and rock out, but then you need artists who don't have anything to do with peers and set up microphones and again you need somebody to do it i've got enough things to worry about with being filmed and the shop's open do you know what i mean you've got thousands of people walking past and this is before pre-lockdown so yeah mitch and um carv were the first two people i knew that i could turn up and literally just blow the house down like they did and for, since then we've uh, met some other artists which i'll probably talk about as they come across here so i'm just going to dip my hand in here and just grab a few cds it's the only way i can actually do this First up, out of the bags, Dope. I am actually wearing a Dope t-shirt. Um, I have filmed Dope live. Um, dope was meant to be my new showreel a couple of years ago. I spoke to Edsel. Um, actually, the vinyl. There we go. Signed vinyls there. Dope part one. Um, dope, obviously, if you didn't know, Edsel went off to be the front man as X in Static X. Um, so Static X has been touring. I went to see Static X live. Um, a bit of history there and stuff like that but again i would love i've always been a fan of dope and then something was going to happen but i think personally um there was a couple of songs and it was one of the songs it was an older track um dun 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 dun, dun. um i was going to use a showreel and they said do it and um it just wasn't right the right vibe every like the last couple of years um when it comes to down to doing a showreel and stuff like that and this is the old school mentality before the days of youtube where you go right i need to do a, i need to do a showreel and you, as a filmer as an editor or whatever um you pick the track and you go right develop it and it was going that way i just i was wanting to go forward i wasn't wanting to repeat myself and like if you look at drill going back to drill um the song called farewell goodbye which um yeah, what did I ch it, I changed the title of it for the video called Change for the Better because I didn't want a load sent off quite a negative message because the song's about farewell, goodbye. Change for the Better is what it was called. So, But again, Jeff, um, who's from Venom, you know, he's the, the, the brains and the master behind that um, band itself. So when he said, use the track and go for it, you go for it. And I really put my heart and effort into it and put the spin. And that's always been the one to beat. And I've never probably done a showreel since then um in the sense of like stuff like the sink or swim with laconia it'd been done prior so i just revisited it but you know like every every year you would go and into it going right i need to make something new and need to make something new and dope was there um and it was just there just didn't know what i want to pull um they were pushing more to use a track from blood money but again i was trying it, it's expression so yeah that and there's static x there as well so something was going to happen there but they're definitely not making the list um, this is definitely making the fucking list up. Wow. Um, right, so drive by audio. I met Certain Death at a Laconia gig at the O2. And although I've only met these guys a few times, um, they've been a massive input. And these are absolutely huge. So they're called Certain Death. Um, 
they've got a few tracks and they got picked up and they actually feature on Grand Theft Auto um, and changed the name to Drive By Audio um, 2009 this was published um, Sex Drive Beat From The Street Jail Bait Can You Dig It Smoke and S uh, Super Smoke And Thunderball Baby Baby Prayer Bring It On Fucking Bring It On It's a fucking amazing track that was going to be a show as well Mary Grindy Groove And Chopper Dickheads um, I just got an EP given to us I think it was off Sean when I first met them and um I mean, stayed in contact. Sean just recently appeared in um, my Alternative 4. Got to film them live um, at the time. Um, they've appeared on some of my albums, they've appeared in my film. Um, they've done some great films as well. Steve, who's um, Sean's brother, he's gone on, he's got a brilliant eye for, for photography and they've done some great fucking like short movies and stuff like that. There's one about zombies, I think it's called Radland. Maybe, sorry if I've just butchered that, I'm just trying to fling it out there, but um, great band, so they definitely, definitely are going in here. Well, set it up, there we go. Yeah, so it's drive by road, also on a certain death. Right, what else we got here? Next up, wow, I saw a fucking hell. So I'm going to get a fucking bit of a blast from the past here. There's that fucker right there, talking about that thing. So I saw, um, so massive shout out to a guy I know called Felix. They're going to talk about fucking MySpace for a fucking long time here. Um, I met a guy on MySpace back in the day, um, caught, well again, I met, got kept in contact with certain death and Laconia, MySpace time, you know. Um, one of the reasons why I set up a YouTube was I did a promo for Laconia and I was like, how to send it? And Calv was like, you will use YouTube. And again, I always go back to the time of film and footage and not being able, you used to have to fucking get, you can probably see a mini DV camera and go around and physically jack in into people's televisions to show them fucking videos. You couldn't just flip your phone out, you know what I mean? So anyway, I saw, um, when I was looking for bands and stuff like that, um, developing bands, um, I asked Felix if he knew any bands and this guy lives in Texas and uh, told me about a band called I Saw and here they are. And they're actually from Manchester. Um, 2009, I was in Manchester for a training course. Um, it was quite a boring week. I was fucking good at it as well because the WWE was on around the corner and I didn't know about it at the last minute because I, I was I would have went and seen them. And anyway, um, the band offered to come and pick us up and they took us to a place called The Big Fish. And I went in and um, they were fucking class guys um, and I filmed some raw footage in the unit and um, took the track and at the time I was uh, doing some promotional work with Fox um, and also skateboards. Uh, so there was like skateboards and there was a couple of companies involved and stuff and um, I, along with people like Chewy and a few of the lads I knew from back in the day, um, I am um, an aunt. So I had the skateboard footage and film stuff and made a music video for it. Uh, it's called Die Trying. Um, it was like a cross brand promotional thing. Song comes out really well because the, the album's quite raw. Um, so yeah, they, they can actually go in there because that is just like a moment in time. They're gonna go to the bottom because I know there's a few of them nothing around but yeah that that's like cool i remember that video that's a fucking horrible skateboard and some skill in it don't get us wrong there's some skill but it was pretty cool to like edit some skateboarding footage you know something i hadn't really thrived on um next up this has come out quite quickly <laughs> so this isn't right some funny story about this dwellers in the earth by chris kolvek right so I got given this at work and went, what's this? And like, obviously I get albums in off work or people come up and go, can you stock my album? And I was like, I don't fucking know what this is. And I opened it up, I fucking read the inner script and I talked to this guy and he's like, oh yeah, I just left it in your shop just to see what the crack would be. And I'm like, you can't just do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if someone brought it up, it was like scanned. So I spoke to him and it, it, this was a concept album and um, I listened to it and I was like, this is the kind of shit that I like. So I started speaking to him. To fucking today, I went to pick up John Carpenter's album. Hiya, Cody. Happy birthday, by the way. Jump cut. Happy birthday, Cody. Um, yeah, sorry, Brit just got home. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it for at least an hour. I don't even know how long I've been talking for. Right, anyway, so where was I? Yeah, so this guy. So today, right, of all the things, right, found this in the John Carpenter era, said He's left us another album. Um, so I've mess I haven't heard back from there. Yeah, this one's called The Elevator Game. Now this is like really good quality manufacturing, sealed track listings. So yeah, that's just, uh, that was gonna be an outtake, but yeah, just leave that out the way. <laughs> right, amen, I don't know, it's not amen, it's just a, that'll be, I don't know what that is. I'm just go to the side then. Wow, wow, needless, needless without a box. 
seat uniform. Hi, Needless, you alright? Um, oh, God, I, I've recently seen some old school footage of them just hanging out with Needless. But yeah, myspace.com. I don't know where the disc is, guys. There's the capture one, I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, potato junk be spelled backwards. Needless are massive fans of Ferry, and um, they were great back in the days of playing in the Union. Um, Freak Show, um, there's a track on there. I used it as a showreel years ago. Just remembered that as I've looked at that. Um, yeah, that fucked me. You're the Freak Show, fucking hell. See, until I just read that track, I totally forgot about that video. It was a bit of a showreel kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, hopefully it just turns up with that. But now it's a great time, so needless. Um, yeah, there, Castro, um, check out MySpace, again, MySpace. Um, Castro, there we go, that's the album cover there. It's all signed by the bands. Directed the music video for the guys, and um, Matty Connor is an absolute legend, literally. He's a fucking machine, he's a drummer. Um, Steel Town Music, along with Jed and Ryan, a massive part of a lot of these man's lives. Um, Matty was in bands like AKA, Castro, and um, Newbridge Downfall and stuff like that. And I got to work with um, and become really good friends with Matty just for the sheer love of making videos and music. Do you know what I mean? I remember when Matt first met Matty and he just turned around and started telling me about a dog. And there's this weird story, then just rocked out this massive drum beat. And it was just like, do you know what I mean? Just We just clicked like that. Um, but yeah, Castro. Um, Castro again just goes in the pile of CDs because that is actually stuck on the wall. So yeah, that was interesting. Next up, right, <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland, reckless in me. Kiefer has appeared on the Only Tree Entertainment channel. Um, I actually got that given off him. So he actually gives us his album. Um, I love it a bit. Um, it doesn't appear on the channel. It's not like one to get used, but it's in that box to go, right? Like, how did you get that album? Kiefer Sutherland gives it. Um, but yeah, it's not really associated on it. Um, next up, Mitch, twice, three times. Wow. Three much Laddie albums there, the first, the second, and the third. Um, when I first met Mitch, um, we sort of, I, I'd heard of Mitch like long before I ever met Mitch. And the same thing goes with me and him because of the whole Better Than FA stuff when I was younger. And Mitch is like the younger cousin of one of my friends from school. And um, amazing talent, absolutely amazing talent. I've seen him play in a band called Vanilla Moon, which Ryan was in as well. And I was speaking to Mitch lately, and he was just like, "What oh, the fuck were you listening to Villa Mo Villa Mo Vanilla Moon the other night? I was just like, I don't know, man, I was high as fuck. I was in the summit, and just band music comes on, and I ask you, what album's that off of Mitch? And then it turned up, it was Vanilla Moon. I was like, Vanilla Moon? So again, going back to some of these bands I've worked with, a lot of them will be in the archive in digital format, you know what I mean? Physical copies, hard to come by. But yeah, um, two albums when Mitch was on sign. Um, that one's Mystique and that's Pro, Pro, isn't it? Um, Mitch is more happy these days, just being, you know, doing his own thing. Um, fucking Turner. This guy is an absolute legend. Absolute legend, Turner. He's one of the funniest fucking people you meet. That's another fucking CD lost. I've seen this CD. That CD's actually in the car. The reason why that CD is in the car, because it was fucking in the actual old CD player. Um, again, one Mitch up. So I'll leave the Mitch albums down there. There's the other one. Yeah, it's another world. That one's all signed by the lads, that. Um, we were meant to do a music video for um, Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Um, the Living Blues was the video we actually sort of set out. It's a live cut of Mitch. Um, I'll, actually, that's going up there because I fucking love that album. And it's a fucking pure product of Matt and Ryan together. Oh, get up there. So let's stay down there. Right, Static X album. Um, my name's in that one. It's all signed that one to us. Um, it's, again, I filmed them live, um, but again, none of the music's changed. So again, doing a short list, doing a short list here. Right, fucking Mitch is about up here again. Here again, live in concert, that's going up there. That's, uh, I got to film that entire thing live. I fucking loved it. Um, there's been a few things released of that, but live in concert album. It's absolutely fucking class. You want to see? Cause that's um, like that's one of the actual copies, um, promo copies. We have to play in store to promote it, but yeah, get it. Predominantly mentioned them. Next up, in Evil Hour, um, I directed the music video for Predators off that album. Um, it's fucking a monster. It's nearly half a million views. It's I mean, it's one of the videos that's not on my channel, but you can check it out. Um, it's done really well. Amazing band. Um, 
Chris Hunter. Uh, Chris Hunter was very positive in, uh, to get me to do a video. I hadn't done one for a while, and um, I went and met them and uh, me and my brother Sam. Um, Sam was here from New Zealand, and Chris was like, come and see this band, come and see this band. And um, I'll actually wrap it up with someone else I was going to talk about here. Um, and as you made, um, with Sam, I'm not jeopardising any time with Sam. Um, you know what I mean? He lives in New Zealand. It's not like I see him every five, fucking weekend. And um, Chris came back and bought Sam a ticket. And we went to see Random Hand. The two Random Hand vinyls I've just recently got. They're awesome. Um, they appear in the moments as well. And the clips we're talking about. And in Evil I was supporting them. They're really good. And um, I just started talking to guys and ended up doing the music video for them. And done great. They're fucking awesome guys. Appeared in stuff like my Horicon videos. Um, I've got another album there. Let's go down. It's actually surprisingly meant to happen because they're both lying there. Um, as I say, we were talking about doing a new music video for a while and that was just before COVID happened, so it hasn't happened yet, but not to say it won't. Uh, but yeah, they're an amazing band as well. Punky Punky. Next up. Oh yeah, still up. Oh, this is definitely going in there. AKA, um, signed edition by Dan Connor. <laughs> AKA is Matt and Dan, who are brothers. Get in there. That's the problem with Paul. He doesn't like CDs. Um, AK are one of the best punk bands you'll probably not hear. I have been haunting Matt for ages. And Matt, at the moment, Castro are re recording a lot of their older stuff, right? And um, they're sort of having a resurgence. And they need to do something with AK because AK is just fucking amazing. The music are fucking amazing. I often will listen to what they've got two albums like fully through riffs mint um filmed them loads live we just never got it it's the one band i just ended up never doing a music video for um i think we tried a few times and that's probably how castro happened you know what i mean the castro music video but it's one of those things will happen eventually obsessive compulsive um it's got no cover because the set poster um, they're all signed in, in a frame, but I think it's in the attic actually. Wow, ball down. Did a music video for them in the middle of the fucking woods. Um, they've just recently appeared on um, Branches Zero. Um, probably not the song I wanted to do a song for, Blind Faith. Um, amazing album. The production value is massive in this. Um, but again, they've just disappeared off that line. I am actually going to keep that in there because that. I can go at the bottom now. Needs a better case there. Yeah, walk down, man. man. That's a fucking heavy ass fucking album, that one. Like, Condog and Crew. Just has to go in there. We've done three videos now for Condog and Crew. Um, say my part of that band is being the guy who makes the videos. Um, I've had great fun. Um, it was just fucking mental to think that, like, nearly 10 years after the album was finished, we started doing music videos. Condogs appeared on loads of stuff I do, they're always in the background, little chips and jabs. If I ever need to fill any music in, Condogs are always maybe a go-to. Um, but yeah, again, I've said to Matt, especially with this the thing we're doing at HMV, bring it out on vinyl. Just bring it out on vinyl, limited run, and just, you can stock it in the shop, you can sell it in your shop, because it's class. The whole album's amazing. And they've done a couple of tracks. Um, and again, lockdowns all over the place at the moment. But Matt's doing stuff. He's in another band at the minute called Ruction. So maybe it's down the line. We'll see Condog on vinyl. Okay, Steve Pledger's next. Um, what's all second was? Again, Steve Pledger is someone I met through doing the live shows. HRV, he's played twice now for us um, live in store. Um, there's a song on here called right to be wrong and um, if you've seen the land of the long white cloud show there's a place in Machuega with the shipwrecked and uh, one song that's even tears my eyes so many times is on that song steve's amazing talent he's got a lot of albums he doesn't dig around with productions they're all really nicely made um professional setup when he comes in and steve's someone we've been talking about doing a music video for a while so he can actually go in there um again just when we locked down um so yeah, I'm talking about IT Dora as Beth McCarry. She's doing really well for herself. Um, just an EP signed. She played live in the shop there. Massive cheers to uh, Liam Carr for doing all the um, sound as well. So Beth played alongside um, Liam Conrad and then Mitch as well. Um, there's a track on air called Boy. It features an IT Dora as well. Uh, it just fits really well. Production-wise, she's going to be a, something to reckon with. But 
it's just at the side of the moment because these are this is meant that this is starting to fill up quite quickly and the box is still half full <laughs> so we're getting there um lunar jets next there's no disc in lunar jets so lunar jet again that's what you would get, get back of the day it's only got four tracks on it actually um thanks for the memories we used that that's the end credit of killing the border movie rizzler zizzler's appeared in a few things we are not machines quite good um Luna Jets obviously did the music for CCV2 who um, played live. I've actually got a, a bit of live footage of Luna Jet. I don't think it's ever been released um, from the Union when they're just playing the massive drums. Dum, da -dum, dum, da -dum. Don't know why that didn't get released. Or maybe that, I don't know. But there's no disc in there, so it's gone to the side. Right, Ashes of Iron. I need to go in there. Um, again, look at the production of that. I've been waiting for a new album from these guys for years. Ashes of Iron's um, track 8, Gone in the Stun. It was the original Lonely Tree intro song. About three quarters of the way through, the song goes backwards. Scott Michael Cavigan's the track now. It's the song Future that's used there. Um, <laughs> that fucking look in your eyes. Um, these guys appear in a moment. I got to work with Al for years. He's dead funny. Um, but he, and his brother as well, Kev. And they're kind of canny. Um, and I think Tom, Tom's dead funny. Uh, I've got a t-shirt. Um, you normally see them play alongside Therapy. Um, so yeah, they go in there, they're fucking class. Uh, so yeah, Therapy there. Um, there's a Therapy vinyl there. Again, I just pulled out loads of albums. It's a nice signed uh, greatest hits. And as I say, when I filmed Ashes of Iron, I got to film Therapy. And Therapy have been one of my biggest inspirations. Um, Therapy letters used Trigger on side years ago as a showreel as well. And again, that was like the the predecessor to the, the change for the better. Right, so next up, no idea. Obsessive compulsive, right, so in memory I was on that. That's one of their first EPs, so in memory was used recently for well, I would say technically and I'm a show real. You know, that's what that kind of was, lost in the woods with all the different personalities running around causing a muck. So yeah, that's a strong contender. See I would because that's got in memory on, but leaves it to the side because then Obsessive Compulsive, the first, set first main album, features Autopsy, a music video I directed down Manchester again in the Big Fish. So I haven't been, I've been in Manchester loads now, but like originally I haven't been in, like I've been in Manchester a few times, and when I went down, I done the ISO video, and then here I am for the Big Fish, and I think it was before the Obsessive, or maybe it's after. I got to work on the Chemist music video, with Richard E. Grant, and that was downstairs, <laughs> so it ended up there. So yeah, I went down, got this, the, the, that artwork is actually on there, because Kelly and Giz are a couple, and they got to stay at theirs the night before we did the music video, and I remember not knowing what song it was till the next day. So we check out Autopsy, that's like where I could like get up and write, it's fucking on. And uh, yeah, so oh, one of them will end up coming out. But again, it's just one of those things where um, years later, um, Kelly trusted us enough to do a video for In Memory Of because I had the idea and the concept and I just heard the song off a wing and I went, hmm, because maybe do some of that and there we go. Next up, right, <laughs> it's the Angel Stone Syndrome Discovery. Uh, it's Kev. Hello, Kev, you all right? I've just seen Kev today. Um, it's, fuck, honestly, I put track one, was it track one's on for 11 minutes. Um, this was used in IT Adora and it's also been used in Abraham in the baseball bat. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of tracks being used on that um, very prog rock um, I remember needing a song for the cave footage in New Zealand and um, I put one of the Kev's tracks on and it just fit there and Kev's is this all um, it's a very charity based album and that and uh, Kev's like wheelchair bound and stuff and he's got he's really good ears and he's really into it and I just remember telling him I said, oh, Kev can I use your track for that and he's like yeah no problem you know like make sure the band's checked and all that and I remember later on the episode, um, I needed more fun and need another track for some car speed up. And the fucking track was that fucking long. All I did was dip the music and I went, oh, where's the song? It fit perfect and I never changed it. So yeah, unfortunately not in the track yet. Because um, this is now going to be like, it'll be the iconicness. Okay, so that'll have to go in because that's still sealed. It's better in silence. Um, I produced this album. Um, it's got Laconia, Boys of Beaks, Firelight, Counterfeit Heroes, Anti Product, Bill Palmer's Nose, Proto Hero, The Chaplin Family, Vegas Baby, Puck, Skin Flint, Bolt Down, Where Heroes Once Stood, Certain Death, Drive Audio, aka Needless, Proto Hero Again, 
Counterfeit Heroes, Laconia, Waterhouse, and Bill Bob Moss Knows. Um, that was a great little project back in the day. Um, unfortunately, that collided with the tournament. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Okay, so uh, fucking hell. Oh, still stuff here. Didn't even know I was still there. Next up, Runaway Lex. Uh, I've got to work with Emma Anderson for years and I've known Steph for a long time through different bands, uh, hostage rescue team and stuff like that. Uh, I've got to do the music video for Runaway for that, but it was a live video, wasn't it? Let me just think right now. Because Scream of Sirens, it's was simply the same band. Um, yeah, there's a, I did it, yeah, Runaway. There's a mock up of that. Um, and it was Scream of Sirens I did the music video for. EP were featured on as well. Fear Can Fear Candy, unsigned edition. Um, Bolt Downer on that. Um, Winter 19, that was a promotional one I got given to work. Beth's on there. So was um, Jeff Mull. Um, Jeff Mull's album's in at work as well. They're canny. Quite like his album. Uh, the Better Man. But again, just open the doors for stuff at work. Right, so this is probably one of the biggest EPs, and there's two actually. So, oh, wow, I've got this one. Storm 66. Um, I met this band not long after working with Baltow, and it's a small world because Cooper, my friend himself, Shields knows them. And um, like all the bands and stuff like that, I ended up doing a music video for Adrenaline Surge, Frontline, and Creed, but Creed double as a showreel. Um, had this burnt out massive big factory um big shout out to sarkel as well for letting us use this factory as well um and you know like just you just look at it i would change the color of adrenaline surge now because it's like cosmic green but like the location the shots um frontline frontline actually used as well as in kill on the bottom intro i doubled for that um great bunch of lads unfortunately no longer gigging um but Years later, they did. They got back together and used a song for Red Mist. Red Mist um, it has its own music video, filmed in the same location, and that's like the boy, the one. But unfortunately, there was never another EP. So they're definitely you need to live in the EP era down there. It's cool to have two actually of them. But yeah, Storm sixty six man. Boys of Beaks filmed them at Steel Car, um, and then they've got some really like it's a demo, two thousand and six demo. Um, yeah, Thunder Tank, go deep, I fucking love it, man. But um, it's quite old. Bill Pop Moore's Nose, okay. Bill Pop Moore's Nose are one of the original bands of Baron FA now. I've known Ned for nearly fucking 30 years. Coming up 30 years, or well over 25. You can go to Tattoo. <laughs> yeah. um, Ned was in a band called uh, Bill Pop Moore's Nose in the early 80s, played for the Prime Minister. Um, played at the Royal Albert Hall, had a fight with Linda's Farm on stage. Notoriously known for the fucking craziness and that a resurgence in the early 2000s. They wrote songs for Better in FA, Better in FA, Mr. Punk and Head, Ginger Jack, Get the Fuck Off My Man. Um, Ned was really inspired by the antics of Better in FA and it was a, a hand in hand and they've done some crazy ass videos and it was just a crossover. Never fucking released an album. I've spoke to Ned on so many different occasions about fucking putting the tracks together and just releasing some of it. They did a cover of Queens in Love of My Car and it was fucking amazing. They put the heart and the soul in it and obviously they're not going to get that released either because of copyright and stuff like that. But honest to God, Bill Palmer's knows legends, absolute legends. It's a fucking crime that they don't have an album. I'm fucking angry at that. Um, Laconia, next up. Um, Reflections of Denial, um, EP, and it was fucking awesome after all the years in Northern Laconia to see this in. And I had nothing to do with this album. Uh, this is an error that like, I just didn't see the guys for a while. Um, and when I heard this, I was in love with it. Um, there was a couple of songs remade. Um, Speak Through Silence went on to be the intro song to This Is Just Life. Arcadia was featured in there as well. I've always wanted to do Waiting was a song I always thought was great for a showreel. Um, but yeah that's fucking awesome and just another band i know that i don't have to ask if i want to use but obviously working a lot with calvin for this day and age because i think every track on scott's album is fucking being associated with um hertz was recently used on uh someone else sleeping with yeah, it's fucking his entire album's nearly appeared across it you know what i mean 21st century love was the intro song to um 
Welcome to the land of the long white cloud. So Laconia definitely lives in there. But me, man, Quaid. I've seen Quaid play it once. I remember talking to the guys and they give us that. I think this is a film. I think that's an actual film, you know. But they've all got fucking cosmic green eyes. Quaid, man. Fuck me, man, Quaid. Licks. Um, Frust. Um, nothing at all was featured in This Is Just Life as well. Um, but yeah, it looks really pretty good. No longer now. I think they've all broke up. But again, it was great to do a video for Scream of Sirens. If you look at Scream of Sirens, that's part of... Um, it's way part of a trilogy because there's a big building called the old Tip Top Building and Room 51's video was done on the top. There's another band who doesn't have any physical media. I've done the music video for them for No Star, but it's all digital. Um, Castro music video was done on the next floor and then Scream of Sirens was done about five six years later underneath in the basement next up the Mercians yeah that's in there what was shipped down these are just demos I was gave but the just Chris there State of Affairs State of Affairs have popped up um better known look at that man Mickey um James um best known for having a song called Connor You're Out The Band which is a song about kicking Matthew Connor out of the band so yeah State of Affairs and that's Beyonce on the other Bubba ship down as well. Uh, skins, um, Chris Hunter, again, it was something in the pipeline a while back, um, but nothing ever occurred, so that can go around there. Another con dog, wow, um, another dog. 36 Strategies, Strategy 1. Seen 36 Strategies play at the O2, and I think. Cav. Castro. I went to the old coop to see somebody and they were uh, Phoenix TX. Um, they were the very first bands I ever seen live when I was young. And um, they seen them in the basement in Newcastle University. And Castro was supporting them with 36 strategies. And uh, it was just like, when it's the O2, they don't let you take the cameras in. Again, at that time as well, when they did that, the phones weren't like brilliant, but um, first six strategies. Uh, I spoke for a while in one of their songs was used cross reference with the lemonade, but because of copyright, I was just sick. Like it's like they're an amazing band. You need to check it out. Um, I've got the EP. I've got all three strategies, but the one of the bands is just fallen in obscurity um, and I haven't used actually. Um, dope demo and there. Uh, what gorilla? I, mean, I didn't even know I had half of this stuff. They played the Union. And um got some fucking quirky names. One of these tracks is actually in Killing the Boredom. But I can't remember which track. But they're amazing. Um never heard of them since. I think it's uh Cultius. But they're an amazing band. I think we've got a chopper on the back. But, yeah. So we're not filling up there yet, but next up Diablo 666 wow these are just stuff I was in like being given again stuff like that when obviously I'd done the obsessive compulsive video and I was known for that like punk bands I would get sent stuff um okay what's right fucking hell look at that so there's that original EP from certain death drive by audio so that's the one they would give us there again that's fucking awesome so yeah gee a bit what a band they again the movement of them, fucking some amazing inspiring music videos from back in the day. So that's really cool to have that. It's up there, yeah. Uh, cancer, family for me. Um, never got around to featuring on the channel. Um, Sony Music, but um, Castro supported them. And um, they were really good live. But now it really come of it. Um, next up, Karma Heart, amazing band. Yeah, I think they're called Animal Heart now. Um, come Alive. Um, is featured on um, a music mashup of New Zealand footage, an inspiring song, fucking awesome. Ink, obviously Ink, this fucking EP is class, like, is this the main EP? No. No, this is, a, it's got mirrors on and design and open waters and stuff. Um, it's got 1455. I think that's a different track, you know, to the music video. But in Tony, has done some great stuff. All of Inc are fucking class lads and um, check out the music video for 1455. Um, I'd actually filmed the music video and when I actually got the mastered track, 
the road extra now and you do realize we've not filmed anything for this video so check out ink's music video it's baffling but that definitely going in there because they keep popping up and they've got a new ep that's fucking awesome right so we're down here ghetto superstar shouldn't be in there Papa roach shouldn't be in there dope another one finding albert so they they're not coming in there. Woo. finding albert an amazing song that is an amazing album. I got to film them live at Steph's. Um, Barry Kirkman put on an amazing show, um, along with Mitch. And I uh, actually missed me and Mitch were just sitting out the back, and Mitch was like, "I think that band's playing." I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> so I was late. To, I was late to film them, but they've got a song called um, "Disconnect." It's fucking tremendous. It's one of the, my, my favorite clips I filmed live. Um, that's contender to go in there, but he's done really well for himself. Uh, the singer. He was dead kind of, what's the singer called? Rob. Um, moved to America. He's made, um, working for Island Records, if I'm not mistaken. Another Static X. Um, Luna Jet. So Dave Hudson just turns up randomly and uh, gives his material. Um, Aliens, that was used in Games Galaxy. Um, Master Last, fucking hell. Got into them, the errors in MySpace. Was going to use their tracks uh, they've got a song called i ache um they've got some really good i challenge you um was going to be a show real back in the day they're from new york i never physically met them um but that was that's old school uh jed connor gave us that greg taylor never used that never even heard of it greg drive by audio uh, uk release ep shortened it down from that to that uh, but you could get that in here um dope blood money um basic strategy strategy free um, wait, that's fucking it's a mint album that's fucking mint um, Space Tin Planet um, filmed Space a couple of years ago Cav supported him um, really good um, again filming at the Goonie when it starts getting huge which is fucking bouncing um, it was really cool got Dry Kill Logic I got to film them years ago and um, they were really good live and um, fuck me man you talk about experiences of filming bands live when a doorman is having a bad day and you're filming it and the doorman's trying to grab the camera what are you doing what do you think i'm doing you've seen the size of the fucking camera fucking one of them like you're talking like fucking hell mid 2000s it's not like i was filming on my phone what do you what do you think i'm doing i did bolt down with support and dry logic i just film bolt down and that so you can't actually see and um, paper tiger is online um i don't even know is it paper tiger on that album? i just fucking love that album cover it's fucking awesome Next up, well, is that another fucking Papa Roach album? These are just random ones that have been put in the box by accident. Yeah, so, wow, look at that. Look at that phone. I told you, look at the fucking thing. <laughs> shit in the box right now. Oh, no, it's going to do me tits in now. It's a funny story, but, no, oh, it's in the car, isn't it? Right. Um, Crash Test Dummies, if you check out IT or door, that's, uh, my dad gave me that when my dad moved to New Zealand and when I was back in New Zealand last year the song came on the radio and when I was just like fucking hell and it meant nothing to anyone else around I was like it fucking crashed their dummies just and my dad just bought us that album um, on vinyl for my birthday a few weeks ago which is awesome these are just VCDs and then the last one is Proto Hero the first two albums of Proto Hero um, it's in the car I totally forgot about it but um, so it's Pro Hero on Better Than Silence, and they were meant to be on Killing the Border movie, but um, I couldn't get a hold of Pro Hero um, when they needed to go through all the things about being released on the movie, just couldn't get a hold of them. And then the section they were featured on was advised that it may be better if it was divided and split out into different portions of the movie, and it was totally right, because it's, like, it's just like boom, and it's when I was living in Spain, and because it was separated, there was stuff foreshadowed that paid off, and uh, loads of people, oh no, I forgot about that and stuff like that. You know, I like, read it pairs off. So it was a really good call by Mark to say, look, man, divide it. But again, it was because I couldn't find a Proto Hero. And I went to the boot sale two weeks ago, and um, there was a Proto Hero album there, 50 pence, brand new, not even out of its package. And um, it's like a best of 
when they've literally like been signed at some point and like literally you hear songs that are just early demos and stuff like that and it was fucking class and then some of that like i'm going to try and track them down and go hey because the music now in the hard drive you know what i mean i think the last time i had a few beers i listened to the tracks and you're just like fucking hey man proto here what a fucking amazing band uh, i got a f i think it was right it was f filmed them at the raven and i ended up just getting a few drinks with them but i think ben it was filmed on ben's camera um and obviously I've just never seen the footage. So that's the end of the box. Now just to wrap up the vinyls before I go to the outtake. Um, you've got Obsessive Compulsive. That's the counterpart. That's the one with missing car. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, they're in moments. Um, Future Heads. I got a film with Future Heads at HMV last year. Um, it was really cool. Part of the live and local thing. Um, free, 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 free. Um, these guys were really awesome. Um, I'm going to meet all three of them. Um, Jason actually wished Brett happy birthday for a 30th, which is really cool. Um, filmed them in Manchester and Glasgow at the Cat House. Fucking mental. The footage came out really nice. Um, amazing band. Next up, um, well, one five. Empty Page is Kelly and Giz. Um, no, obsessed with Compulsion no more, but it's really cool. Um, there's a song on this used in... Unfolding is used in IT Adora. Um, next up, right, this guy needs some fucking credit. So there's a guy called Dan, right? And I don't think it's on any tracks. So you talk about the live and local stuff and I've just met people all over the Northeast with um, live music. And this guy walked up and he went, hello, can I talk to you about the live stuff? And I was like, oh yeah. And can I talk about putting your arms in the shop? Yeah. And it, it, it's still in early progress, it takes time. And um, so you can get like Mitch's album, and you can get Cav's album, and the stuff like Jeff Moll, Ollie, Ollie Mers, Ollie Pando, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a few albums like creeping in. And this guy just turns up and goes, Hey, can I put my albums in the shop? And he has, honestly, right, he has about five or six albums on vinyl. And he has seven inch singles, and he came in and I actually gave them to the staff and went, What do you think this band? Because his guys just give us all this stuff, and you know he's very passionate about it, and um, he just falls off the radar. Like you hear from, them, then you don't hear from. And then um, I spoke to him. I says last time I see him because he comes in the shop quite often. And I was like, "Dude, you need to send me your f music digitally." So he did, and um, we used one of the tracks in one of the early Abraham videos. Um, Britt went to York, and we used one of the tracks in the background. It just fits really well, and. They've got a song called uh, Endless Recklessly Love, Endless Recklessly Love, something about love and reckless love. It's probably not on this track. It's one of the albums I don't have on vinyl. Endless Recklessly. Um, it's on that album there. Lost and Eve is on there as well. Um, and I was I want to do a video for this because this band's quite different. It's inspired by a lot of New Order, Soft Cell back in the day and that kind of stuff. And all the production's fucking meant, especially with your headphones on, you end it to music. I was like, right, you want to do something. And when Dan had just plastered the wall, and um, before he was going to plaster it downstairs, I was thinking about painting loads of fucking weird stuff and loads of slow motion and paints and swirls. And Dan was just like, and Dan was just like, as long as it's not bit, like, I think kind of water based paint or something like that, because he was going to plaster it. And it was just timing. And then when Glenn came in to do the video, because um, that band is actually now called V, he's called his band VHX, or it was the last time I seen him. So Emil's Telegraphic Transmission Device is the name of the band. It's a fucking mouthful, I've told him that. When, like, basically I had no song in mind and we time-lapsed all that wall and I sat down and I did that video in one sitting. And to me personally, that's my 2021 showreel because it was just one sitting, I just zoned out. And I literally had 21 songs of this guy's just on the archive. And I just flicked down and I was just flicking, flicking down and stay which is a song I'd never fucking heard, was the second off last track. And I heard it. And as soon as the beat kicked in, I went, and I started to see it against time lapse, I went bang. And that song has become one of my favorite fucking songs. And when I look at that wall, I just hear that song and it was just meant to be in that video. You know, even though I had the idea months ahead about something completely different, it unfolded that way. So yeah, so we've only got one space left. Um, so I'm not sure of that. I mean, Mitch has got quite a few at the top there. Again, should be Bill Podmore's nose. Castro, there was a missing Castro EP. There's, there's gonna be bands, like possibly in here. I'll talk about in the outtakes, but yeah. Um, I'm not sure which one Paul, but as I say, 
I'll see you in the outtakes. So I'll the outtakes. Um, I'm going to try and wrap this up because you heard Britt came home and I've been waffling on for ages. Got no idea I was doing this. I've just waffled and waffled. First up, hi, is Zenon. So this is Zenon. Zenon is the uh, singer of Castro. Zenon spent a lot of time living in Japan. Yeah, this guy's doing great for himself. Did an unboxing for this a month ago and trying to get a hold of Zenon for a little cameo. Zenon. But yeah, I need to check Zenon out. He's class as well. Um, I just totally forgot about that. I was waffling on about stuff. Um, I'm actually going to put Proto Hero up there for now. It's not going to fit. I was going to put Proto Hero. It's not going to fit, love. It's a fucking weird box, that. We don't know. We don't know. Fit, no. No, no. Uh, no. I don't know. There's room for a new band. Right, so in this cluster are random CDs. Now, I recently, again, talking to Sean. There was a sick there's Sean. <laughs> That's how it was a while. So that actually belongs, even though like the fucking comes <laughs> right up the fucking butthole, which I found hilarious, actually belongs to that line. Right there. There we go. That tells. Right, so there's a lot of random stuff in here. So first up we've got Dr. Lipship. Done a lot of work with them. Um and it was never fully that's just like a live raw recording. And I've been thinking about for a while of putting stuff like that on the YouTube channel and just creating what the tracks are of that and just saying it's raw. And that's, you know, spent a lot of time with Gally, Kidda and t -Ray. And there's a lot of tracks used in the background and stuff like that. There's a song from Killing the Border Mountain as well. Let me see through that, but yeah. Again, just digital. And a cold chamber. Something almost happened with cold chamber back in the day. Um, that just, that's why that just ran me in there. Um, one of the earliest videos I ever did, and you'll never see it. You'll never see it because he'll fucking kill us. Um, Jack once just danced in my bedroom when we were young. We we're talking like when we we're 17, 18 year old. <laughs> he danced to uh, Logo, and uh, there was another song as well he danced to, but I can't remember now. And uh, <laughs> Logo, and he just danced around. But again, like me wanting to do videos, you know, like keeping Jack in time and him rocking out and then changing clips in and stuff like that. Again, Got to give Jack a lot of credit, you know, because it, 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 like, one of the best things when you want to learn to edit, it's basically you film bands, like, again, going back to Skinflint. I filmed a lot of Skinflint live, but when you've got the song and you're trying to match it up, you've got to compromise. You're never going to have it perfect, and you've always got to compromise and get another camera angle and making it work in the edit and cutaway stuff, so, yeah. Next up, Ink. So, <laughs> Ink, it's got a willy on it. Wow, look at that. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, 40 no. 1455 on that. WWE, Ruthless Aggression. There's a blue tag on. Doesn't need to be in there. AKS first album. Again, fucking amazing band. The Matt needs to do a greatest hits and bring it out on vinyl. Bill Podmore's nose, look at that. I'm talking Lee. These are another band that fuck me, you can see straight through that. First cut of the album when they brought, they actually went to the studio. It was filmed in one of the last of um the last day recordings of Dell's Lane. Hey Barry, Kirkham. Hey Kidder. It wasn't Kidder, Kenny. Before it was Waterhouse. Ball like rain. <laughs> the Illuminati. Um, yeah, fucking hell. Nail bomb. Vegas baby. Hey Ollie, you all right? Doesn't got a box. Ah. <sighs> I've got Vegas Baby's album. I went to Vegas Baby's launch party. I've like Vegas Baby were uh, oh man, oh, fucking class Vegas Baby. Yeah, Ink pre Ink just dance as well. Again, this is like the record them and you just there you go. This that's how you do it. Make it that right. That is a song I heard in Spain. And I, like you can't even like look how fucking damaged the disc is. Look at that. So when I lived in Spain, I heard this, and it's like this weird, um, like Spanish band, and uh, the intro track was fucking outstanding, and I used it for Better Than One movie, and um, I got the rights to it, um, but I never could get a physical CD of it, and um, I don't even think that I'll go on the computer now. It'll be in the archive, like buried the song itself, but it's not Mega Boys. It's it looks like M A G A, Dos Los Lo, blank CD. It's got something on it. Wow! 
before they were bolted down, they were freight with an eight. There it is. <laughs> Needless. Still got it. There you go, guys. Lobotchkin played at decades when I put bands on back in the day, and the lead singer got up and put his fucking head through the roof. It's like fucking crazy. But now uh, they did. They were they were going big places. Like let's fall off the radar for that. Ginger Jack the song. So again, going back to Cold Chamber and Dan Jan Jansen around. Ned was inspired to write a song about Jack, because even though I've known Jack all my life. Um, Jack would have been years younger because I was really good friends with Jack's older brother Kieran and then Kieran went off in the army and I was like there's my little ginger brother <laughs> but I hadn't seen Jack for a lot of years and like I'd spent a lot of time with Ned and we did all this film and then all of a sudden who's this ginger kid well, I was like, well that's Jack so Ned literally wrote the song about this ginger kid who just randomly appeared Dr Lipshit original um, EP Funk and MySpace and Dr Lipshit look at the gold disc of that aye Bad Pollyanna. Well, um, this band, had, I mean, this is the single, my inquiry. Um, I filmed them live. We're obsessive compulsive at the Union. Fucking hell of a voice. I've got a bit of a fan following. They were doing um, Sign Me Up and you can get the album. Um, I was more interested in getting them in there. That font, Bleeding Massacre, has been used loads. Like, but no, she's got a hell of a voice here. Corn, he to stay. The reason why that's. <laughs> the reason why that's. All. As I remember me and Jack going, we can make a video like this one day. And um, I remember there's loads of video footage. And I think because of this disc, the screensaver on the old like Windows, like fucking 98 or whatever, was just corn. He just stay. And of course, going back, you look at the footage and you're like, ah, oh, fuck man, logos. Wow. So we're nearly at the bottom. Um, the Chaplin family, they're all called Chaplin. All of them. Chapman Family appeared on, again, that's just the whole through, um, talk through MySpace, Chapman Family went on to be quite a big thing down south. Uh, they're on Better in Silence. Um, oh, hang on, I've got the wrong one. So that Needless is a pre-demo because there's Castro, I know. It's got Patience on there, I've handed Waiting. They put us on called Waiting as well. Guns and Goons. Uh, so yeah, and the last one is actually Needless Pursuit in Uniform. So yeah, that needless goes in there. So I tell you what, I want to give it a needless. That spot, I'm going to put in, honestly, honour them by fixing the fucking CD. Just so much. Um, there'll be a CD around here I'll use. Um, but no, um, man, man, I've been so fortunate to work with all these bands. The, there is bands I forgot about. There'll be bands I've seen live and filmed live and like, oh, fuck. especially in the days of the union. Um, as I say, like when we did the shows at the Union or in decades, um, I just got to met loads of bands. Um, they would come on there and play live. Um, you know, there's some great fucking performances by people and that. And uh, again, other bands got to work with and do music videos, but like, it means the world was with people like Mitch and Cav. You know, I don't even have to ask them to use tracks or even like Matt. Just, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, like, the last couple of years when it comes to music I, I did find myself quite burnt out when it comes to doing music videos because like it's a different era i mean when i was doing music videos not not everyone had a camera not everyone could edit and there was just almost no point i was just doing it because i loved doing it and bands were like wanting to make fucking promos to send out and stuff like that um you know again going back to when i was talking to carbon like i was like what the fuck do we do with this video like, well that youtube's just started <laughs> that youtube's just started right Cav? On MS Messenger, mate, we'll put this video on YouTube. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But even then, like, Laconia Awake, the EP, um, I got to spend a lot of time with Laconia in the studio. And that song went on to be demo of the month from, like, Metal Hammer. I've still got the magazine lying around somewhere. I think it's right over there. Um, I give the demo to Keith, my cousin. And Keith, you know, he made Dog Soldiers and doing really well. Um, done Harry Brown and stuff like that and uh, Laconia is featured on a movie called The Tournament that I got to work with in, in Bulgaria um, you know what I mean and it's just another part of my life and to think that it went from a song like that to being able to take something here and it to now being on an international movie and you know what I mean it goes against like me really wanting to push myself by going let's go and do a video for this and the videos because when I get zoned in I really zone in and Again, going back to this now, a lot of kids have got phones, a lot of generations, and you look at Ink, like one of Ink's videos, I think Sam did it, um, that my brother Sam had talked about, 
but Ink did a music video when Dan became the front man in that video was fucking amazing you know like fucking well played man fucking hands down amazing and like you look at other bands like up like An Evil Hour and Obsessive Compulsive they've all done videos after it and you know what I mean and I think it's great like but again with <clears throat> me personally I've got to want to do it because like to me like any lower probably the biggest video I'll ever do right but again it's not, uh, just saying to test myself um, and just stuff like that you know what I mean I'm always going to be inspired just look what happened with VH Jacks or whatever Dan's band would be called sorry Dan but it does open to do different stuff um, as I say um, the best thing about this this though um, is always like there's definitely going back to the whole cold chamber thing and you just never know but the problem is especially back then but now it's different because you copyright and stuff like that you, um, you never know a copyright you don't know if a band's cool with it or not or you can reach out and stuff like that or whatever um, back then you kind of had to look for bands and just being creative and getting it out there and you, they become your friends and like a lot of these bands have been a bigger part of friends I mean like you know what I mean I, could, I wouldn't trade them for the world you know what I mean? I've travelled with them. I've, you know, and spent hours and time with them, um, and they've inspired my life. You know what I mean? It's like, again, it's great. But like other bands, I would like. I mean, for example, one of Jimmy Will's new tracks. Sorry, I'm just gonna stand up for a second. And this is no dish for them, but I've got a song called Congratulations, and I was really inspired. I thought, fucking hell, could make a mint show reel, and especially for someone who's been filming his life for over twenty years, and you click a button and it's there said hey okay like maybe it's your track didn't get a reply and you go like you know what i mean it's bigger bands therapy yeah what you got you know what i mean like fuck <laughs> <laughs> but again it's more like it's the inspiration and i like to keep stuff as a creator i like listening to music but like i will literally stick with local stuff do you know what i mean because it's always it's just like we're all on the bus and we all want one thing and like even bands from years ago, you know what I mean? It's using the tracks and stuff, so yeah. Right, I'm pretty much talked out. What a fucking memory trip. What a fucking mess. And Brit's basically just got in from downstairs, so I dedicate this video to Brit. <laughs> Sitting there, doing quiet at the bottom of the stairs. I'm Steve Monkey Mason. Um, pretty much all the videos are on the channel. There'll be loads of live footage. Check out Moments. That was the best of some of the live footage. I've always been meaning to make a live too. The HMV videos are on there as well. Um, as I say, a lot, you can find a lot of links to all the bands. And hopefully down the line, we've known how much now I've actually got. And especially that, they'll probably be double that. Because there's bands I'm thinking of now, and I'm like, that's, I heard that recently, and I've heard that. And I'm like, you know what I mean? There's EPs in there. So, again, it's the whole copyright of YouTube. It's great, really. I just can't be bothered with it. Especially going all the way back to the start of this, when it's like, when Mitch is like, Mitch got a copyright claim. I don't know now about it, I know, but someone's making money, it's just like, come on, come on, it's like, fuck off. It's like when you see one of my clips on someone else's video, you're like, that's my video clip. Oh, well, you know, it's like, fuck off. <laughs> Thanks for watching, hope you check out all them bands. Goodbye for now. And now, he enters here.